so a very warm welcome to all of you this side i am dr harmeet goel your ops and gynae faculty so welcome you all to this uh, youtube live session at uh, nlc delhi and uh, we are just going to revise the subject of <coughs> gynae today uh, as all of you know about me i am dr harmeet goel uh, i am the gynae faculty here and uh, i have been taking classes uh, since 2003 when the fmg exam just started so presently i am working as a gynecologist in the preventive oncology department at rajiv gandhi cancer institute and research center rohini so i am faculty as well as the you know like doctor working at rajiv gandhi hospital so these are the books which i have written for the fmg as well as pg so let us just start the discussion okay so i have divided this session into three parts first i will be today discussing about the gynecology and we are going to revise the gynecology okay am i audible to you just write down in the chat box am i audible to you voice is not clear settings they are asking increase the volume uh, am i audible shall we start the discussion yeah okay okay Hmm. Okay. Okay. So students, we are starting up and uh, chat box is open. Chat box is open. Is kwaane de. Is kwaane. so chat box is open for your uh, replies my first question is identify the instrument used in gynecology is it ellis tissue forceps is it hysterectomy clamps is it volsalum or is it babcox forcep this is an important question which has been asked in fmg exam as well as the neat pg exam so what is this instrument and what is it used for yes all of you are writing correctly this is this is the babcox forcep it has got a lock and this is like this so it is usually used to hold the tubular structures to hold the tubular structures like fallopian tubes like ureters okay so this is called as the babcox forceps it has got a lock and it has a hollow uh, you know like tips where it is made in such a way to hold the tubular structures like fallopian tubes or ureter so mainly its role in gynecology mainly its role in gynae is it is used to hold the fallopian tubes during tubectomy operations like pomeroy's technique okay tubectomy operations like pomeroy's technique or like any other tubectomy operations previously it was irving's uchida sparklands etc so nowadays most commonly technique used for tubal ligation is pomeroy's technique simultaneously you should be knowing 
that what is the time for postpartum sterilization postpartum sterilization is to be done within one week of delivery the best time for postpartum sterilization is 24 to 48 hours of delivery 24 to 48 hours of delivery next question is what is the failure rate of pomeroy's technique so answer is 0 0.1 to 0.4 percent 0 0.1 to 0.4 percent and usually an absorbable suture is used to ligate the fallopian tubes and we use cat gut okay we use cat gut to ligate the fallopian tubes okay so next it is also used to hold the ureter in ureteric surgeries to hold the ureter in ureteric surgeries okay so randomly i have selected the questions but it is going to cover all the topics of gynecology today and tomorrow at the same time 7 to 9 i will be taking up the revision of obstetrics so here i am discussing the questions which are important and latest pattern based questions of of your exam as well as some of the pg level questions i have added as exam is not going to be very very simple similarly image based questions also i have added concept based questions some ini cet exam questions so as to give you a best preparation the second part is we are going to take up after this question discussion we are going to take up some important content and images and some of the important short notes part of the gynecology and third part is going to be the key points okay so we are going to quickly revise okay so first part is the questions so i'm coming down to the next question 24 year old primary gravida came to the opd with the complaints of bleeding per vaginum associated with pain she has two months amenorrhea on examination abdomen is soft non-tender palpation uterus is enlarged 14 week size first clue in the question is while you are reading a question and expect that there can be the long statement question as in this present exam of INI CET which is an AIMS PGI Gipmer and women's exam for the PG entrance together they take one exam in that there were long statement questions so please do expect that in your exam there can be the long statement question because from next year it is going to be one exam which is NEXT exam so while you're reading a statement in your mind just underline the important points which is a clue towards your answer so first thing is the patient comes with bleeding second thing is two months amenorrhea third thing is uterus is enlarged up to 14 week size so what is the clue uterus is enlarged more than the period of gestation according to the period of gestation it should be eight week size but in the question it is written as 14 week size so fundal height more than the period of gestation first thing is wrong dates second thing is twin pregnancy third is polyhydramnios fourth may be some ovarian cyst with pregnancy and fifth may be h molar pregnancy okay so next when you do further examination by the palpation method there is a duffy feeling soft duffy feeling and velotment will be absent when you try to locate the fetal heart with the doppler fetal heart will be absent so fundal height more than the period of gestation in 70 percent of the cases it happens number two uterus is soft and duffy and velotment is absent and third thing is fetal heart will be absent so in this case 
it is non tender no cervical excitation that means they have already ruled out there is no feature of ectopic pregnancy okay and they have given an ultrasound finding in the image now what is this diagnosis and what is your answer what is the pattern shown in the ultrasound see when i am discussing i have selected the very very important question but does not mean i am just going to revise that questions only question and answer question and answer no i am going to give you the concept i am going to give you the clue how to arrive at a diagnosis and i am going to discuss that all important points of that particular topic and what other additional questions that can be asked so number 2 is what is this appearance which is shown in this image so dr vishakha has written a very very correct answer this is a snow storm appearance it is a snow storm appearance so you get a clue is it a missed abortion is it an h molar pregnancy is it an ectopic pregnancy or is it a blighted ovum first thing when fundal height is more than the period of gestation it cannot be missed abortion now since there is no cervical excitation it cannot be ectopic pregnancy since uterus is enlarged it cannot be blighted ovum looking at the image looking at the history okay and looking at the clues towards diagnosis my answer is h molar pregnancy even those who have read the subject but they are not able to revise with just ruling out and applying your concepts you can come to arrive at a correct diagnosis because the questions which we read same questions cannot be asked in the exam but if your concepts are clear you are able to mark because obs gynae is a subject where you can get full marks if there are 30 questions you can get 30 out of 30 provided that your concepts are very very clear so it's not a very difficult subject it is very very scoring subject among all the clinical subjects now next question identify the type of tubectomy method is it irving's is it uchida is it pomeroy's or is it croner's write your answer in the chat box uh dr udhya cervical excitation means when you are moving the cervix okay the patient will wince with pain cervical excitation is a feature of ectopic pregnancy okay now identify the type of tubectomy method shown in this image so everyone is right this is a pomeroy's technique this is a pomeroy's technique now which part of the fallopian tube is cut in the pomeroy's technique write down in the chat box which part of the fallopian tube is cut in pomeroy's technique yes it is the isthmic part of the fallopian tube which is cut it is the isthmic part of the fallopian tube which is cut in tubectomy method done by the pomeroy so this is actually the modified pomeroy's technique and this cut part of the fallopian tube is sent for histopath number 1 it is confirmatory for your diagnosis number 2 it solves the medico legal purpose okay now suppose a patient has undergone a tubectomy operation and unfortunately the husband dies or she has taken a divorce she is going for a remarriage and she comes to you for tubal recanalization for tubal recanalization surgery okay tubal canalization operation how much part of the fallopian tube is left that tubal recanalization surgery is possible how much part of the fallopian tube is left that tubal recanalization is possible think about it and you can mark minimum part minimum in centimeters you have to answer how much is the total length of the fallopian tube length of the fallopian tube is 10 cm when you have done a tubectomy operation by pomeroy's 
the tube length has shortened. So how much length should be left that recanalization is possible? Answer is minimum length left for tubal recanalization surgery is 4 centimeter. Minimum length for tubal recanalization surgery to be possible is 4 centimeters. Okay. Can you tell me if a tubal recanalization surgery has been done? What can be the risk later on? The answer is wherever you are recanalizing a fallopian tube, there may be a chance of formation of stricture and it might result in ectopic pregnancy. So when you are doing a tubal recanalization surgery, do tell your patient, okay, the success rate are there, but there may be a possibility of ectopic pregnancy. So when you are taking a consent, you have to inform this to your patient. Next. A female presented in the OPD with vaginal discharge. Identify the causative organism from this given image. Identify the causative organism from this given image. Is it trichomonas? Is it candida? Is it gardenella? Or is it dodderlane bacillus? First of all, my question from you is, what do you see in this image? See, we don't know image-based questions will be asked or it will not be asked. We don't know. But we have to prepare the concept. Yes, students have written it very, very correctly that these are the clue cells and clue cells are seen in these are the clue cells and clue cells are seen in bacterial vaginosis caused by Gardenella vaginalis. Okay, Gardenella vaginalis. Now, you have to keep on telling me thick cardi white vaginal discharge. What is the causative agent? Thick cardi white vaginal discharge. Keep on writing in the chat box. Yes. Answer is candida. Number two. <coughs> Number two. Strawberry spots in vagina. Strawberry spots in vagina strawberry spots in vagina yes you can write down in the short form i can understand because it's difficult for you to type long so you can write down in the short form it is trichomoniasis it is trichomoniasis number three question what is amsel's criteria and what is it used for Amsel's criteria. Amsel's criteria is for bacterial, yes, very right, bacterial vaginosis. Students, you don't need to type the complete word or sentence. I can just get it what you are writing. You can type in short also, okay. So, it is bacterial vaginosis, okay. And pH is more than 4.5 because lactobacillus is replaced by Gardenella. So, pH changes towards alkaline. On the saline microscopy, there are clue cells present on the wet film. Okay. Clue cells present. WIF test is positive. WIF test is positive, which is also called as amine test. You can take the sample on the slide and put QH. There is a, there is a, 
fishy smell. There is a fishy smell. So this is positive whiff test. So clue cells are seen in bacterial vaginosis. pH is more than 4.5. Whiff test is positive. Okay. And number four. What is a drug of choice for bacterial vaginosis? Answer metronidazole. What is a drug of choice for trichomoniasis? Answer is metronidazole. Okay. Which organism you can't detect in wet film? Which organism you can't detect in wet film? Options are Candida, Gonorrhea, Trichomoniasis, Gardenella, Chlamydia. Yes, Dr. Budding Jashi is very correct. Dr. Veera, very correct. So, Chlamydia. Chlamydia is you only do the culture it can't be detected in the wet film it cannot be detected in the wet film let's just go back to our uh, question and answer part a female undergoing ivf and was given injection beta HCG for ovulation trigger. Okay. See when IVF is been done. Oocytes are retrieved after the beta HCG injection is given. Because this will help in ovulation. Okay. So after the beta HCG injection is given. When a female is been prepared for IVF. Patient presents with nausea, vomiting, headache. Ultrasound of the pelvis done which shows some ascites and ovary looks like the image given uh, by chance matter of chance that uh, the image is been uh, missed. I just forgot to add the image. So its image is like this. Okay. So what is your most probable diagnosis? What is the most probable diagnosis? Yes. Dr. Himanshu is right. It is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Okay. So let me show you the image. Image should also not be missed out. It was image like this. It was the latest question asked in the exam. Okay. So this was the latest question being asked in the exam. So can you see this image? It is not polycystic ovarian disease because cyst in the polycystic ovarian disease are arranged in the periphery as a necklace pattern of the ovaries. Here it is polycystic not the polycystic ovarian disease it is hyperstimulation of the ovary so this is called as ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome okay and can you tell me which is the drug which causes maximum chance for ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome so your answer is hmg injection Human menopausal gonadotropin that is FSH injection causes ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome most commonly. Okay. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome most commonly. Okay. Next. Which of the following is estrogen dependent pubertal change? Vaginal cornification, cervical mucus, breast development all so routinely what we are discussing in the classes or test and discussion apart from that i have started my today's rapid revision of gynecology okay 
just to give you a new look and just to give you a thinking that question may not be the as set pattern as we are studying so there may be deviation possible or expected <laughs> So, which of the following is estrogen dependent pubertal change? So, the correct answer is all of you are writing very correctly, it is all. So, vagina fornification is dependent on estrogen. Estrogen acts on the cervical mucus and leads to profuse secretion and abundant secretion of the cervical mucus. When you make a smear, you see that there is furning pattern of the cervical mucus. So, furning of the cervical mucus is caused by which hormone? This is an important question. Answer is estrogen. Why there is furning? Presence of sodium chloride in the cervical mucus leads to furning. Now, what is the name of the test which when you take the estrogen and you try to stretch it? That is called as Spin barquette. Spin barquette is cervical mucus stretchability test. Cervical mucus stretchability test. So, cervical mucus provides a medium for the sperms to gain access to the genital tract. So, more chances of pregnancy in the proliferative phase that is in the first half of cycle. When the ovulation is finished, corpus luteum is formed which secretes progesterone that makes the cervical mucus thick and scanty. So, in the luteal phase, the chances of pregnancy is reduced. It is the proliferative phase where the cervical mucus is abundant, profuse, thin and it, gain, it gives an entry to the sperms to ascend upwards. So, the test where you take a cervical mucus on a slide and you put it a cover slip and try to stretch it this is called as spin barquette cervical mucus stretchability test okay so it is an important test in the infertility couples fine now can you tell what is what is cervical mucus hostility test cervical mucus hostility test <coughs> the name of this test is miller kujrox miller kujrox test where a slide is taken and cervical mucus is taken and on the other side semen sample is kept cervical mucus is taken and on other side semen sample is kept and this is visualized under the microscope sperm started moving towards cervical mucus that means cervical mucus is hostile for the sperm so this is for the cervical factor of infertility all other factors we read sometimes we don't read the cervical factor of infertility and treatment for cervical factor of infertility is IUI, intrauterine insemination. Okay, intrauterine insemination. Next, 13 year old girl had presented with primary amenorrhea, not attaining menarche, breast development is normal, axillary pubic hair are normal vagina is blind on per rectal examination uterus is absent what is your next step in management so sometimes a straight question does not come like mullerian agenesis or testicular feminization syndrome or turner syndrome or Kalman syndrome or Asherman syndrome but a situation is created because they want you to apply your concepts okay so, very less likely that it will be a bonus if you get the straight question based on the single liner pattern. Don't worry, I am going to make you prepare in the concept manner, image based question, instruments, single liners and repeat questions, everything in this two hours session. So, stay with me. Fine. Now, in this question, they are not asking you the diagnosis. 
they are asking what is the next investigation you will order so you have kept in your mind what is the diagnosis okay but you have to tell in this question what is your next line of management is it a karyotyping confirmatory is it an ultrasound or you are going to send the patient chalo bhai estrogen progesterone kara ke aaiye or you are sending the patient for fsh lh what is your yes you are right dr himanshu that it is a mullerian a genesis and see confirmatory always will be a karyotype okay but karyotype is never the first investigation we order kabhi bhi kisi question mein karyotype aap first kabhi bhi mark nahi karte theek hai because it is a final confirmatory investigation they have asked pehle aap question padho next मैनेजमेंट नेक्स्ट यानी कि अब आप क्या कराओगे सो देर इज प्राइमरी एमेनोरिया नॉट अटेनिंग मिनार की ब्रेस्ट इज नॉर्मल एक्सिलरी प्यूबिक हेयर नॉर्मल दैट मीन्स इन दिस केस ओवेरियन फंक्शन इज नॉर्मल पर रेक्टल एग्जामिनेशन यूट्रस इज एबसेंट सो यू हैव ऑलरेडी मेड योर क्लिनिकल डायग्नोसिस एज मोलेरियन ए जेनेसिस so first of all the simple and basic investigation which is non invasive can be done in unmarried girl there is no problem and it's not going to harm her just convince the mother that we are going to just check uterus is absent or not okay so it is clear cut answer that is ultrasound okay ultrasound you don't write your answer as karyotype you don't write your answer as fsh lh or estrogen progesterone you will make your answer wrong if you are attempting any of this so first of all ultrasound is a simplest investigation which can be done in unmarried girl married reproductive age group premenopausal postmenopausal anybody so here the answer is ultrasound next all of the following regarding non scalpel vasectomy non scalpel vasectomy is called as nsvt are correct except okay all of the following regarding non scalpel vasectomy are correct except sexual function following healing is rarely affected hematoma is up to 5% of subjects may occur sterility immediately after vasectomy recanalization is possible so you have to find out which is the wrong answer which is the wrong answer out of the four statements three are correct and one is wrong which is the wrong statement dr jain dr nabi dr anand dr sanjay dr ओके डॉक्टर यादव शंकर आनंद अभिषेक रमेश ओके एवरीबडी इज करेक्ट स्टर्लिटी इमीडिएटली आफ्टर विसेक्टमी इज अ रॉन्ग आंसर आफ्टर द विसेक्टमी यू हैव टू टेल योर पेशेंट दैट बैकअप मेथड शुड बी यूज फॉर Three months. That is for ninety days. The couple must use additional contraception because after the vast difference is been cut, the sperms can stay in the tract and leads to infertility. Okay. Sperms can stay in the tract, and you know, like sorry, it uh, it can lead to the failure of contraception. Okay. it can lead to the failure of contraception so that is why after the vasectomy the backup method should be used for three months so in vasectomy this is the testis this is epididymis this is vas deferens so in vasectomy the vas deferens is cut so whatever may be the remaining tract so there is no continuity from epididymis to the vas deferens it is been cut but whatever the sperms are there in this remaining vas deferens 
can reach through into the ejaculation okay so that is why this remaining sperms in 90 days time or in the three months time okay the couple can use a barrier contraceptive okay so after that the person should come to the hospital for a semen analysis if there is no sperms in the semen then they don't have to use any contraceptive method a complete sterilization has been achieved fine next what is the failure rate of vasectomy failure rate of vasectomy is 0.15 per 100 women year 0.15 per 100 women year <coughs> which of the following conditions require a serial determination of pregnancy test that is serial determination of beta hcg serial means weekly or monthly intervals serial means weekly intervals or monthly intervals is it a molar pregnancy? Is it a viability of a pregnancy? Is it a gender identification? Or is it RH incompatibility? In which condition you will do serial beta HCG? That means weekly intervals or at monthly intervals. The answer is a molar pregnancy and it is self-explanatory. Okay. So I don't think I need to elaborate upon this particular point. Now, identify the instrument. What is this instrument and what is it used for? What is this instrument shown in the image? Is it dilator? Is it curate? Is it sound or it is vaginal wall retractor? It looks like a light weighted instrument okay so vaginal wall retractor is a heavy weight instrument so from the image it doesn't appear to be a vaginal wall retractor vaginal wall retractor is used when you're doing any gynecological examination like you're examining the cervix like you're putting a dilator to perform mtp or you're doing <coughs> you're doing dnc or you want to take up the endometrial curettage or endometrial sampling for some gynecological investigation so you're putting a sim speculum and you're using an anterior vaginal wall retractor to lift the anterior vaginal wall so it is not vaginal wall retractor because it appears to me a light instrument it is not a sound sound is just like this okay the uterine sound where you measure the utero cervical length has an angle. So this is uterine sound. So it does not appear to be uterine sound. Especially this session is for everybody not just for few students. Even those who do not have any idea about the instrument. This is the way you can identify. Because I have taken the curate in my question. But they might give you uterine sound, they might give you vaginal vault retractor or anything else. And if you have not been aware of the instrument, I am just giving you hint how to get to your answer. So this is not looking like sound. It is not looking like Hager's dilator. Hager's dilator are the stainless steel dilators like this. So it is not looking like Hager's dilator. So clear cut this answer is uterine curate uterine curate this is a blunt end so when you are using it for obstetrics you are using a blunt end because the uterus is enlarged and it is very very soft if you put in a blunt end you uh, sharp end you might cause the perforation and this is the sharp end so this curate is used in dnc's it is used when there is a secondary pph and there is a retained placental bits like succinctureta lobe. So you want to do a gentle curettage. So we are doing with blunt end. 
suppose you are suspecting some endometrial hyperplasia patient is been bleeding she is having menorrhagia or she comes with a postmenopausal bleeding and you want to take an endometrial sample to rule out any endometrial cancer then you can take that dnc with the sharp end okay so there may be a question on the uses so i have told you how does dilator looks like how does uterine sound looks like how does vaginal vault retractor looks like and what is the use of curate and how to differentiate sharp and the blunt end now next so my session my style is different i take a mismatch uh, uh, i mix up the questions like uh, not just very very straight question concept based question and all related points और कौन कौन से अलग अलग क्वेश्चन पूछ सकते हैं एग्जाम में नॉट जस्ट क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर दैट इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी हेल्पफुल एक क्वेश्चन लीजिए उससे रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन जो बन सकते हैं वो समझाइए दैट इज वट इज माई पैटर्न तभी वो जो मेरे सेशन होते हैं वो यूजफुल होते हैं लास्ट टाइम मैंने जो जून सेशन लिया था यूट्यूब पे उसमें से एज इट इज ट्वेंटी के ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चन आ गए थे ठीक है इट्स नॉट दैट I am making the paper, but हम जब आपको पूरा ही concept revise करा देंगे तो definitely उसमें से questions तो आएंगे Now my next question is the young girl complains of not attaining minarchy, presents with periodic abdominal pain to the hospital. So you have to judge the question. Periodic pain or cyclical pain abdomen means one and the same thing. Cycles में आ रहे हैं periods में आ रहे हैं ठीक है On examination. on examination the following presentation is seen which is the likely lesion of the girl suffering from okay suppose there is an image okay suppose there is an image okay and what is the lesion in that case suppose the image is suppose this is the image in the question okay this is the image in the question now what is your likely answer what is your likely answer in this question okay so i think everybody is clear this is imperforate hymen this is imperforate hymen fine now name this classification what is this classification is it a pages classification ferryman galway quintros or tenors what is your answer what is this classification used and what is this exactly yes this is tenors classification you can see there is pubic hair development shown okay then there is breast development shown then there is axillary hair development so there are five stages for puberty changes breast and axillary pubic hair and name of the classification for this changes is the tenors classification pages classification <coughs> is used for abruptio placentae ferryman galway is used for hirsutes ferryman galway is used for hirsutes quintros classification quintros classification is used for twin twin transfusion syndrome quintros classification is used for twin twin transfusion now a women presented in gynae opd with secondary amenorrhea with history of curettage done for abortion so there is secondary amenorrhea and there was a curettage done for abortion and fsh is 7 milli international units per ml actually the image is not given in this question but i just wanted to make it simplified for you so that 
image should be set in your mind what is this question because this question has been asked in the pg exam aims neat pg inicet and now they have asked this question in fmg exam so you should be knowing any time just remember whenever there is a dnc done for any missed abortion or any type of inevitable abortion and your patient is developing secondary amenorrhea no doubt it is Asherman syndrome <clears throat> okay no doubt the answer is Asherman syndrome okay so dnc followed by secondary amenorrhea the answer is Asherman syndrome okay one more thing they have given you the fsh level 7 milli international units per ml you should be knowing the normal fsh is 5 to 20 milli international units per ml so this is absolutely normal and what is this image this image is hsg image where a dye is put what is the name of this cannula which is used to put a radio opaque dye in the uterus this is called as leash wilkinson cannula leash wilkinson cannula so leash wilkinson cannula is used to put the dye into the uterus and you can see in this case you can see in this case this is this is irregular filling defects this is irregular filling defect and <coughs> the gold standard investigation in this case which will be confirmatory for your diagnosis and it will be treating that is hysteroscopy that is hysteroscopy okay now my question from you is what is the distending media used in hysteroscopy distending media distending media used in <coughs> hysteroscopy answer is it can be a gas media gas media that is carbon dioxide or it can be liquid media when you are using a diagnostic hysteroscopy you can use gas media but when you are doing a therapeutic hysteroscopy therapeutic means like you are doing some procedure like Asherman syndrome you are treating like septate uterus you are treating then we use a therapeutic uh, you know like we use a liquid media and the best liquid media is glycine next is Hiscon okay but we often use ringer lactate or normal saline also but ideal media is glycine or Hiscon so Operative hysteroscopy is basically done for Asherman syndrome. For Asherman syndrome, where there is adhesiolysis, it is done for septate uterus and it is done for submucosal polyp or fibroid. Submucosal polyp or fibroid. So, gold standard investigation for uterine pathologies is hysteroscopy because one you can confirm your diagnosis number two you can treat your patients like asherman syndrome septate uterus and submucosal polyp or fibroid one more thing you have to know a term which is very commonly asked nowadays the term is the term is a u b there are many questions you will find on the term AUB abnormal uterine bleeding abnormal uterine bleeding and you should be knowing about palm cohen palm cohen where it is endometrial polyp there is adenomyosis there is leomyoma there is malignancy there is <coughs> coagulation disorder <coughs> there is 
ओके देयर इज आईओसीडीज आइट्रोजेनिक एटसेट्रा ओके नाउ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ 19 ईयर ओल्ड गर्ल प्रेजेंट्स विद प्राइमरी एमेनोरिया ब्रेस्ट नॉर्मल एक्सिलरी प्यूबिक हेयर नॉर्मल अल्ट्रासाउंड एब्सेंट यूटरस दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी क्लीन कट एंड क्लियर कट क्वेश्चन सो राइट डाउन योर आंसर इन द चैट बॉक्स क्विकली व्हाट इज योर डायग्नोसिस इन दिस क्वेश्चन यस डॉक्टर मनीष हैज रिटन इट करेक्टली डॉक्टर नबी डॉक्टर रजत डॉक्टर विराज डॉक्टर आलिया डॉक्टर आदि so it is clear cut mullerian agenesis and plenty of times i have been discussing in my classes so what is the karyotype in mullerian agenesis 46xx as the ovarian function is absolutely normal is there any treatment for mullerian agenesis no you can't do uterine transplant so the only treatment possible is vaginoplasty whenever the female decides to be sexually active or she is going for a marriage okay next a 30 year old female presents with secondary amenorrhea urine pregnancy test done because first thing in a secondary amenorrhea is you have to do urine pregnancy test take it that the patient is pregnant okay so if urine pregnancy test is negative theek hai urine pregnancy test can be negative or it can be positive if urine pregnancy test is positive then you can follow the patient on the uh, pregnancy or antenatal checkups if it is negative then what is to be done if urine pregnancy test is negative now this is a very very concept based question okay let us just discuss this particular point because uh, i have been discussing in my classes but you know like we read straight straight sometimes the question is asked in this manner so if the female has presented with secondary amenorrhea do urine pregnancy test if urine pregnancy test is positive then you follow on the on the antenatal checkup if urine pregnancy test is negative okay urine pregnancy test is negative then you give her progesterone challenge test any progesterone any progesterone you give it for 5 days and stop she will have withdrawal bleeding if she has withdrawal bleeding that means your diagnosis is an ovulation most likely it is polycystic ovarian disease if the withdrawal bleeding is absent if the withdrawal bleeding is absent then cause can be okay in that case you give estrogen followed by progesterone estrogen followed by progesterone theek okay? hai and if there is bleeding if there is bleeding okay that means the cause was premature ovarian failure or the cause was at the level of pituitary or the cause is at the level of hypothalamus if there is no bleeding that means it is asherman syndrome if your concepts are clear you can revise like this theek hai for asherman syndrome do hsg followed by hysteroscopy if after giving estrogen progesterone the bleeding occurs then most likely it is premature ovarian failure you get fsh lh level done it will be elevated okay next so all of the following are the likely causes for secondary amenorrhea except because there is no withdrawal bleeding if after progesterone challenge test the bleeding was there so the answer is pcod is ruled out because aapne progesterone diya uske baad bhi bleeding nahi hai aapne estrogen progesterone diya bleeding hai to ye teenon causes honge pcos is progesterone deficiency theek hai next 25 year old lady presents with 6 weeks amenorrhea pain abdomen vaginal bleeding on examination uterus is normal size cervical excitation is positive vitals are stable next line of management so you start reading the question 
इट इज सिक्स वीक्स एमेनोरिया पेन एबडोमन विजाइनल ब्लीडिंग इट इज एमेनोरिया इंटू सिक्स वीक्स पेन एबडोमन एंड ब्लीडिंग पर विजाइना एंड ऑन एग्जामिनेशन यूट्रस इज नॉर्मल साइज सर्वाइकल एक्साइटेशन पॉजिटिव बट वाइटल्स आर स्टेबल वट इज योर लाइकली डायग्नोसिस वट इज द डायग्नोसिस इन योर माइंड एंड वट इज द फर्स्ट इन्वेस्टिगेशन यू विल डू फर्स्ट थिंग यू विल डू I am very happy with Dr. Jashi's answer. It is ectopic pregnancy, and first thing is do urine pregnancy test confirm it is pregnancy because you have to rule out blighted ovum. You have to rule out missed abortion from this finding. Okay, so uterus normal size. It can be a blighted ovum. It can be a missed abortion in blighted ovum. Pregnancy test might come negative. तो हमेशा इन क्वेश्चंस में सबसे पहले हम क्या करते हैं यूरिन प्रेगनेंसी टेस्ट करते हैं तो आंसर में आपको बीटा एच सी जी नहीं लिखना है लेप्रोस्कोपी लेप्रोटमी कुछ नहीं लिखना है इवन अगर अल्ट्रासाउंड भी होता तो भी मेरा पहला आंसर यूरिन प्रेगनेंसी टेस्ट होता क्योंकि सबसे पहले भैया कंफर्म तो करो शी इज प्रेगनेंट और नॉट ऑलवेज यू कांट बाईपास आंसर लाइक दिस दिस में पीरियड ऑफ जेस्टेशन सिक्स वीक्स है पेन है ब्लीडिंग है यूट्रस भी नॉर्मल साइज है तो सबसे पहले देखो तो सही वो प्रेगनेंट है कि नहीं है ठीक है आई एग्री विद यू एमेनोरिया दे रखा है एग्री दैट एमेनोरिया है तो यूरिन प्रेगनेंसी टेस्ट पॉजिटिव ही आएगा तो उन्होंने वही तो पूछा है कि सबसे पहले वट विज इज योर फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ मैनेजमेंट सो यूरिन प्रेगनेंसी टेस्ट वाइटल स्टेबल का मतलब क्या है दिस इज एक्टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी बट इट इज अनरप्चर्ड एक्टॉपिक सो इन दिस क्वेश्चन इफ आई हैव टू मेक लाइक दिस ठीक है देर इज ए मेनोरिया एंड यूट्रस इज नॉर्मल साइज बिकॉज जेस्टेशन सैक इज इन दी इन दी फेलोपियन ट्यूब ओके so next line of investigation will be transvaginal scan plus beta hcg since the condition of the patient is stable so first of all i am going to do a transvaginal scan and i am going to check where is the gestation sac so in such situation in such situation where it is unruptured ectopic pregnancy where you are suspecting an ectopic pregnancy first thing is you confirm the urine pregnancy test it is pregnant next step is do transvaginal scan and serial beta hcg if on the transvaginal scan they write a report like empty uterus and there is adnexal mass so it is query ectopic then you have to depend upon serial beta hcg to arrive at a diagnosis ठीक है अगर वो क्लियर कट लिख देते हैं कि जस्टेशन सैक इज इन दिनेक्सा देन यू कैन मेक द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ एक्टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी एंड यू कैन प्रोसीड विद द फाइंडिंग्स नेक्स्ट अ लेडी प्रेजेंटेड विद कंप्लेन्स ऑफ फाउल स्मेलिंग ग्रेश वाइट विजाइनल डिस्चार्ज विफ टेस्ट इज डन ऑन द डिस्चार्ज वॉज पॉजिटिव एंड ऑन एग्जामिनेशन द क्लू सेल्स आर सीन वॉट इज दिस कंडीशन एंड वॉट इज अ ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर ट्रीटमेंट आई थिंक आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दिस क्वेश्चन ओके सो विफ टेस्ट पॉजिटिव वॉट इज इट इट इज गार्डेनेला विजाइनालिस एंड द ट्रीटमेंट इज मेट्रो निडाजोल सो इट इज गार्डेनेला विजाइनालिस एंड द ट्रीटमेंट इज मेट्रो निडाजोल नेक्स्ट अ फोर्टी एट ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल प्रेजेंटिंग विथ इन गाइनी ओपीडी विद एबनॉर्मल यूट्राइन ब्लीडिंग फॉर लास्ट सिक्स मंथ पेल्विक एग्जामिनेशन अल्ट्रासाउंड वर फाउंड टू बी नॉर्मल ओके वट विल बी योर नेक्स्ट लाइन ऑफ मैनेजमेंट आपके पास एक पेशेंट है एज ऑफ द पेशेंट इज फोर्टी एट ईयर एंड शी हैज प्रेजेंटेड विद एबनॉर्मल यूट्राइन ब्लीडिंग फॉर लास्ट सिक्स मंथ ओके but pelvic examination and ultrasound findings are normal fine 
सो वट इज योर नेक्स्ट लाइन ऑफ मैनेजमेंट इन दिस के सिंस she is 48 years family is complete are you going to do hysterectomy since she is bleeding abnormally are you going to do a myrina insertion or you are going to put her on ocps because ocp treats menorrhagia ocp reduces the menstrual blood loss myrina also reduces the menstrual blood loss or you are going to do endometrial sampling what is your answer I can see the answers, Doctor Sanjay, Doctor Somya, Doctor Rahul, Doctor Nabi. Okay, Doctor Ashish, Doctor Ramesh, Doctor Jain, Doctor Rajesh, Doctor Karishma. Everyone is right that I am going to rule out two things. I am going to rule out two things. What can be the possibilities of this bleeding? Possibilities of this bleeding. There can be. a thick endometrial lining which is causing bleeding okay this thick endometrial lining is endometrial hyperplasia now the question arises is endometrial hyperplasia atypical is it simple is it complex for that i need to see histopathology now second possibility in this question can be endometrial polyp or submucosal fibroid so while you are doing dnc that polyp can be taken out and it can be sent for histopathology it can be a benign polyp or it can be a malignant polyp third possibility is that she is growing some cancer inside endometrial cancer so for that i need to take a sample okay so i am doing i am doing in this case an endometrial sampling where i am putting up a pipel or i am putting up pipel or i am putting up a carmen's cannula students you should be knowing the instruments as well a pipel or carmen's cannula and i am attaching a syringe and i will aspirate this endometrial sample here and then i will send this sample in a vial which is containing formalin okay for histopath because i want the histopath report is it polyp is it endometrial hyperplasia or is it endometrial cancer if it is endometrial hyperplasia which type of hyperplasia is it is it a simple endometrial hyperplasia is it a complex endometrial hyperplasia or is it an atypical endometrial hyperplasia since if the report shows atypical hyperplasia i am not going to take up any risk i am going to plan a simple hysterectomy okay because there is 28% chance that it can turn into malignancy if it is polyp i will go for next investigation i will go for hysteroscopy and i will do resection of the complete polyp and send it for histopath if it is cancer then i am going to do the further investigations like i am going to do mri i am going to do further investigations and i am going to plan the management depending upon the you know like uh, mri report there is a myometrial invasion or there is cervical ex extension or the lymph nodes are positive i am going to plan a vardaim cysterectomy or if and i will do the exploratory laparotomy do the staging surgical staging of endometrial cancer and depending upon the histopathology report if it is a papillary serous carcinoma or clear cell carcinoma i am going to do the you know like extensive treatment now next hormonal profile in a menopausal female this is a very very favorite question and i think many of you knows this question hormonal profile in a menopausal female what is your answer so this is a clear cut answer and i don't think we need to much elaborate upon this i had been discussing this plenty of times so fsh basically fsh is more than 40 international units per ml and serum estradiol lh is also elevated is less than 25 picogram per ml that is what is a hormonal profile in a menopausal lady 
Now, most important indication for surgery in uterine anomalies. This is a very, very important and it is many times untouched in our classes when we are taking up the classes. So, sabse important indication kya hai uterine anomalies ki? Ki incidentally diagnose kar hai, toh hume operate karna hai. Is it causing recurrent abortions? Then we need to operate. It is causing dysmenorrhea, we need to operate. Or is it causing menstrual disturbances, we need to operate. What is your answer in this question? This is very, very important question. Yes, I am happy with your responses. Hamesha jabhi bhi ye recurrent abortions karte hain, which is also called as habitual abortions which is also called as habitual abortions to hum hamesha operate karte hain uterine anomalies ya fir uterine anomalies are causing infertility then we need to operate upon the uterine anomalies so basically we can do open laparotomy or we can do hysteroscopy and laparoscopy and treat upon the uterine anomalies so gold standard investigation Gold standard investigation for Mullerian duct anomalies is hysteroscopy plus laparoscopy. Hysteroscopy plus laparoscopy. Okay. Hysteroscopy plus laparoscopy. Fine. Next. Which of the following? Peak is responsible for ovulation. Okay. Which of the following peak is responsible for ovulation? Uh, when I was posting this because I have made this um, question paper in the word file and then I have uh, put it in the, you know, like slides and PDF, PPT and then PDF. So, might be this part has been missed out. So, I am just marking it. You can tell your answers. This is peak A, this is peak D, this is peak B and this is peak C. Now what is your answer? Which is responsible because such question has been asked in the latest NEET as well as in the FMG exam. Ki ye ek hormonal levels lete hai and they ask you which peak is responsible for ovulation. This has been asked in 2021 FMG exam. So I think everybody has guessed it correctly peak A and what is peak A? Peak A is coinciding with LH peak. LH peak occurs 10 to 12 hours before ovulation. LH peak occurs 10 to 12 hours before ovulation and hormone responsible for LH peak and LH surge is estradiol peak. Okay, hormone responsible for LH surge and LH peak is estradiol peak. And the level of estradiol should be more than 200 picograms per ml to cause a response. Okay. Now, LH peak. LH peak and LH surge I have been telling. This complete is called as LH surge. And this is called as LH peak. Okay. Serum progesterone. For ovulation is done on which day of the cycle? Day 21. Day 21. Next. A 30 year old female presented with secondary amenorrhea. Progesterone challenge was given. No bleeding. Estrogen progesterone showed bleeding. What is the likely cause? What is the likely cause? After estrogen progesterone there is bleeding. So, I have already explained most likely cause is premature ovarian failure because there is estrogen progesterone deficiency as ovarian function has stopped. So, in premature ovarian failure, if there is secondary amenorrhea, the treatment is estrogen followed by progesterone. Okay? If she has presented 
with infertility same patient has presented with infertility then in that case the treatment is IVF using donor oocytes IVF using donor oocyte this I have already explained in my lectures okay identify the given karyotype because there is always a question on the karyotype identify the given karyotype what is your answer what is your answer I think everybody has judged it very correctly so it is can you see this is trisomy 21 what is the type of congenital heart disease in trisomy 21 or down syndrome type of congenital heart disease in down syndrome is endocardial cushion defect endocardial cushion defect okay endocardial cushion defects now identify the swelling seen in 22 year old female she has presented with this swelling is it a cystocele is it a gartner cyst is it a bartholin cyst or is it a cervical polyp what do you see number one cystocele is present below the urethra why it will be present in this lower part of vagina a swelling in the lower part of vagina will be rectocele not cystocele number two this is not in the lower part of vagina it is in the vulva okay labia minora and hymen region so it is not cystocele okay it is not Bartholin cyst, Bartholin cyst also you can do to differentiate cystocele and Gartner's duct. You can do a bladder sound test. Bladder sound. You put the bladder sound in the urethra, okay, and see the limit. So bladder sound test will also be negative. Cervical polyp. It is in the vulva you are not even seeing the cervix so it is not cervical polyp as well so the answer is this is bartholin cyst and what is the treatment of bartholin cyst treatment of bartholin cyst is mars supplization <coughs> treatment of bartholin cyst is mars supplization okay so how to rule out cystocele from gartner cyst it is a bladder sound and bladder sound can differentiate this swelling from cervical polyp and Bartholin cyst as well. This is outside. It is not inside. For cervical polyp, you have to do per speculum examination. You have to visualize the cervix. This is visible without any speculum examination. So it rules out the possibility of any cervical swelling. Identify the type of contraceptive. What is this contraceptive? What is the failure rate of this contraceptive? What is the category of this contraceptive and is it releasing any spermicidal agent? Name the spermicidal agent. So, this is today. So, it is a vaginal sponge. Vaginal sponge. Which category of contraceptive it is? It is barrier contraceptive. This is barrier contraceptive. It releases a spermi cidal agent it releases a spermicidal agent which is nanoxinol 9 it releases a spermicidal agent which is nanoxinol 9 and failure rate is 9 to 30 per 100 women year so this is today which is a vaginal sponge it is a barrier contraceptive method it releases a spermicidal agent nanoxinol 9 and the failure rate is 9 to 30 per 100 women year next all are correct about polycystic ovarian disease except what is the answer so for that you need to know the investigations of polycystic ovarian disease you need to know the investigations of polycystic ovarian disease which is the wrong answer in this question first thing is polycystic ovarian disease 
is a most common cause of hirsutism in a young girl. Hirsutism means there is presence of androgen. So serum testosterone in the free form is elevated and sex hormone binding globulin is decreased. You have to remember this. So the wrong answer here is testosterone decreasing which rules out the possibility of PCOD because serum testosterone is elevated. Okay. Next, contraceptive with maximum failure rate. Why I am uh, asking this question again I have already discussed this in my class and even in the test and discussion which I have taken. The reason is people keep on marking the answer wrong. Dekho, abhi bhi kuch log wrong answer likh rahe so answer to this question is spermicidal agent. Failure rate of spermicidal agent is 30 if used alone. Condom the failure rate is 2 to 10. OCPs the failure rate is 0.1. Copper T 380A the failure rate is 0.6. So the answer is spermicidal agent not the condoms. Okay. A lady passes urine while coughing or laughing. What is it? Whenever a lady passes urine on stress, that is called a stress urinary incontinence. Stress urinary incontinence. Okay. And this test is positive in cases of genital prolapse. In cases of genital prolapse. So this is stress urinary incontinence. What is the surgery for stress urinary incontinence is TOT. Through surgery there is a trans obturator tape which is been put. Surgery for Stress urinary incontinence. It is not vaginal hysterectomy. It is TOT, trans obturator tape. 18 year old girl presents with primary amenorrhea, colicky cyclical pain abdomen, most probable diagnosis. I think it is clear cut hematocolpose. Next, an obese lady is diagnosed with PCOS. What would be the first line of management? Always when there is obesity with polycystic ovarian disease, the first step is always lifestyle modification. Now why? Whenever there is obesity in the body, the androgen levels are very high. And increased androgen suppresses the ovarian function. Increased androgen suppresses the ovarian function. So when there is exercise or lifestyle modification, you are reducing the androgen levels in the body and automatically the ovarian function will improve. So while the patient is advised to do the lifestyle modification, okay, it will reduce the androgen levels and number one, that will correct the hirsutism. When androgen levels are reduced, it will correct the hirsutism. Number two, number two, it will correct the ovarian function as well. It will correct the ovarian function as well. Okay. So lifestyle modification will solve two purpose. Number one, number one, it will Correct the hirsutism by reducing the androgen levels. It will correct the any acne. It will correct any, you know, like musculinizing body figure to the feminine body figure. And it will correct the ovarian function. Automatically, the menstrual function will improve. So, automatically, the menstrual function will improve. And if even after lifestyle modification, if there is no success, then you can go for the second line of treatment that is introduction of the drug. Now, a lady came to the gynae OPD with a history of condom failure asking for a contraceptive advice. History of 
condom failure. Asking for a contraceptive advice, she is multiparous, she is married. What will be the best postcoital contraception in this case? What is your answer? Some of the students, I don't like the response because I have already been discussing this for a pretty long time. The best emergency contraception in married multiparous lady. Okay, the best emergency contraception in a married multiparous. I am giving you the hint is always, always copper tea. Is always, always copper tea. Because we don't know this act of coitus has led to fertilization or not. Even if the fertilization has occurred, the mechanism of action of IUCD is prevents implantation. And simultaneously, this lady will get an advantage of spacing contraceptive. She will get an advantage of spacing contraceptive as well. If in this question, it was a condom failure in unmarried girl, my answer will be LNG pill. ठीक है? अगर इस question में मैं unmarried girl कर दूँ, तो मेरा answer change हो जाएगा LNG pill. ठीक है? लेकिन question में married multiparous lady है, so best emergency contraception is copper tea. Okay? Because number one, even if the fertilization has occurred, the mechanism of action of copper tea is prevents implantation. Number two. Additionally, she will get a spacing contraceptive. So, whenever she wants, even if you have done a copper T 380A insertion where the effective period is 10 years, anytime she wants, she can get it removed. Okay, it's not that effective period is 10 years, so she has to keep the copper T inserted for 10 years. No, it's not like that. Now, Colposcopy filter color is, I think this everybody knows it is green filter. This I have been telling in my classes. And colposcopy is a microscopy. It is a confirmatory investigation. It is confirmatory investigation. And it's mainly done when there is dysplasia finding on pap smear. So, pap smear is a screening test. Colposcopy is always a confirmatory test. All of the following are used as emergency contraceptives except copper IUCD, LNG IUCD, LNG pill or RU Which of the following is not used as emergency contraceptive? Which of the following is not used as emergency contraceptive? Answer is LNG pill. Sorry. Answer is LNG IUCD. Because LNG IUCD is Myrina and Myrina is not an emergency contraceptive. So, copper tea is to be applied within 5 days of unprotected coitus. Whereas, LNG and RU pretisics has to be given within 72 hours of unprotected coitus okay of unprotected coitus now name the national family planning new contraceptive method which has been included by government of india okay number 1 number 1 is antra Antra. What is Antra? Antra is DMPA injection. And another one which is included is Chaya. Chaya is St. Croman, which is Saheli non-steroidal contraceptive pill. Okay. So, Antra and Chaya you should be remembering. Now, a female came to Gynae OPD asking for contraceptive counseling. Last childbirth was one year back. All of the following histories are important while you're doing an IUCD insertion because this is the one she might require a spacing contraceptive because the child is one year old. So, next two, three years, she is not going to plan a 
pregnancy so the best contraceptive for spacing is iucd so she comes to you for a contraceptive counseling she has one year old child and which of the following history that you decided to advise her that iucd is going to be the best contraceptive for her and she agreed now which of the following history is not important history of pid or std history of undiagnosed uterine bleeding previous history of ectopic pregnancy or history of anemia which history is not important or least important out of the following भैया क्या नहीं समझ में आया आई एम टेलिंग वेरी वेरी क्लियरली क्वेश्चन में इतना क्लियरली लिखा है आपके पास एक पेशेंट आई है उसका वन ईयर ओल्ड चाइल्ड है अब उसको एक स्पेसिंग कॉन्टेसेप्टिव देना है तो यू डिसाइडेड आई सारी हिस्ट्रीज इंपॉर्टेंट है या कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड है कौन सी हिस्ट्री की कुछ खास वैल्यू नहीं है विच हिस्ट्री इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट history of anemia is not important anemia is not an absolute contraindication for iucd because kahi pe question maine likha you have to do a copper tea insertion because anemia you give her the iron and anemia will improve okay but if it is pid or std specially within 3 months that's a contra indication you can't do iucd insertion if it is undiagnosed uterine bleeding okay that can be a suspicious of genital tract cancer iucd insertion is contra indicated revise the contra indication of ocps and iucds history of ectopic pregnancy copity increases the chance for ectopic pregnancy because it prevents uterine pregnancy but it does not prevent fertilization so if there is any damage to the cilia of the fallopian tube then the risk of ectopic pregnancy is increased so ab contraindications dekho pid undiagnosed uterine bleeding and previous ectopic pregnancy are absolute contra indication of iucd these are absolute anemia is relative contra indication for copper t but anemia is not a contra indication for myrina and anemia is a status by giving hematinx you can improve you can build up the hemoglobin to 10 g 12 g percent but if there is pid or std then you don't know that cilia has been damaged and the risk of ectopic pregnancy is there if it is undiagnosed uterine bleeding there is a risk of genital tract cancer if it is ectopic pregnancy then copity increases the chance for ectopic pregnancy okay copity increases the chance for ectopic pregnancy have you got it now no she is not pregnant but history of ectopic pregnancy is always a contra indication to iucd dr tushar agar aap isme c answer mark karoge to what about the d i think maine concept bilkul clear kar diya hai ki anemia is a relative contra indication maine aapko anemia kabhi bhi absolute mein nahi padhaya lekin undiagnosed uterine bleeding ki history aap hamesha lete ho pid std ki lete ho previous history of ectopic pregnancy ki lete ho theek hai If the female does not have one child, then this question will not be made because ये spacing contraceptive है ठीक है तो answer में ये options नहीं होते और question की format different होती तब उसमें होता कि newly wed female है तो क्या देना है आपको और अगर उनको OCPs सी पीस पूछने हैं तो ओ सी पीस की कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन डिफरेंट है पी आई डी इज नॉट अ कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन टू ओ सी पीस एक्टॉपिक प्रेगनेंसी इज नॉट अ कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन ठीक है तो क्वेश्चन भी तो जो आंसर चाहिए होता है उसके हिसाब से बनाते हैं यार कुछ भी तो क्वेश्चन नहीं आता यस yes, मुझे ये नेस्ट कैफे मिल्क जो भी है आपका जो भी ओरिजिनल नेम है बड़ा मस्त लगा आपका आंसर समझ आ गया वही तो हमारा कॉन्सेप्ट है खाली क्वेश्चन आंसर पढ़ाना वो तो आप किसी भी बुक से लिख लोगे ठीक है अब ये जल्दी से बताओ फॉलोइंग इज द कॉन्टेसेप्टिव मेथड तो पुरानी चीजें भी तो रिवाइज करानी है तो मैंने मिक्स एंड मैच बनाया थोड़ा सा डिफिकल्ट पेपर है इतना इजी भी नहीं है यस 
ये मैं पढ़ा चुकी हूँ तो इसमें मैं ज्यादा टाइम वेस्ट नहीं करूंगी बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस समथिंग एल्स ऑल्सो ठीक है मैंने कुछ इमेजेस की स्लाइड भी बनाई है और मैंने सिंगल लाइनर्स की भी बनाई है तो वो भी मुझे डिस्कस करनी है तो इसको क्विकली फिनिश करते हैं दिस इज एश्योर एश्योर इज अ हिस्ट्रोस्कोपिक स्टरलाइजेशन ठीक है नेक्स्ट डायग्नोस्टिक क्राइटेरिया फॉर बैक्टीरियल वेजिनोसिस हम बैक्टीरियल वेजिनोसिस कर चुके हैं पी एच शुड बी मोर देन फोर पॉइंट फाइव ठीक है ओसीपीज प्रिवेंट ऑल एक्सेप्ट ओसीपीज का क्वेश्चन तो बच्चों इस बार आई एन आई सी ई टी एग्जाम में भी आया आई एन आई सी ई टी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू नवंबर तो ओ सी पी इज इम्पॉर्टेंट है नाउ लेट मी चेक ऑल ओ सी पी इज प्रिवेंट ऑल एक्सेप्ट प्री मेंस्ट्रल सिंड्रोम मेंस्ट्रल डिस्टर्बेंसिस बिनाइन ब्रेस्ट डिजीजेस थ्रोम्बो एम्बोलिक इवेंट्स वट इज योर आंसर कॉम्प्लीकेशन ऑफ ओ सी पी विच पार्ट इट्स अ कॉम्प्लीकेशन ऑफ ईस्ट्रोजन सो थ्रोम्बो एम्बोलिज्म इज एन एब्सोल्यूट कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन फॉर द यूज ऑफ ईस्ट्रोजन a young female of reproductive age group an absolute contraindication of prescribing ocps absolute contraindication for prescribing ocps yes it is impaired liver function these are relative contraindications but impaired liver function is an absolute contraindication impaired liver function is an absolute contraindication contraindications of ocps are all except contraindications for ocps are all except yes menorrhagia so menorrhagia is an indication for giving ocps because ocps reduce the menstrual blood loss by correcting the menstrual cycle so it will correct the menstrual blood loss most common menopausal symptom most common menopausal symptom is always vasomotor symptom that is hot flushes sweating palpitations this is because of estrogen withdrawal this is because of estrogen withdrawal and the treatment for vasomotor symptoms is premarin which is estrogen 0.6 to 5 mg daily theek okay. hai what is the first line of treatment for osteoporosis osteoporosis occurring in menopausal lady the answer is bisphosphonates bisphosphonates like aldronate etc 25 year old married female attends the gynae opd she is infertile listen to this question very carefully because i have not discussed this in any of my classes so 25 year old female presents in gynae opd she is infertile while the doctor asked her many questions regarding infertility history she showed an hsg all her reports are normal this is hsg finding what do you see in this hsg what is your likely diagnosis what do you see in this hsg and what is your likely diagnosis you can see this is a leish wilkinson cannula and it is dye is going to one side and only one side of fallopian tube is seen so this is unicornuit uterus reproductive outcome in a unicornuit uterus is not very good okay 
this is unicornoid uterus only one cornu so there are two mullerian duct usually they fuse to form single uterus two fallopian tubes cervix and upper portion of vagina if suppose one cornu just fuses and rest of the uterus is developed from other side this is called as unicornuate uterus so difficulty in conceiving in this case next <laughs> 32 year old lady presented in infertility clinic she has regular cycles ovulation can be confirmed on which day of the cycle okay so this has been discussed serum progesterone on day 21 which of the following is the treatment for decubitus ulcer decubitus ulcer is when in genital prolapse cervix is lying outside the vagina okay in cases of genital prolapse when cervix is lying outside the vagina, venous return gets obstructed. So, there is venous congestion leading to formation of an ulcer called as decubitus ulcer. The treatment is, treatment of decubitus ulcer is reposition of uterus in to vagina and doing glycerin acriflavin packing glycerin acriflavin packing okay glycerin is hygroscopic reduces edema and acriflavin is antiseptic glycerin is hygroscopic hygroscopic absorbs the edema and acriflavin is antiseptic Acriflavin is antiseptic. So, this decubitus ulcer will heal with packing. Okay. So, this is developed because of venous congestion. Next, identify the cannula. This is Leash Wilkinson cannula to perform HSG. Leash Wilkinson cannula to perform HSG. Next, Amsel's criteria bacterial vaginosis. We have done this. A sexually active female came with profuse, frothy, foul-smelling vaginal discharge with intense itching. On examination, strawberry cervix. Strawberry cervix we have already discussed. Must need its screening for cancer cervix. Must need its screening. What is your answer? We have already discussed this particular question. 21 to 65 years of age and first pap smear. First pap smear is to be taken at 21 years of age in a sexually active female. So, every three yearly it should be repeated. A lady with abdominal mass was investigated during surgery. There is bilateral ovarian mass and there is a mucin leading signet ring cell. You know signet ring cell is seen in Krukenberg's tumor so this is a very very clear cut question so i am not explaining it further a 55 year old female was found to be diagnosed with cancer cervix stage 2b what is your management for stage 2b always for the advanced stages it is concurrent chemo radiation it is concurrent chemo radiation and what is the radiosensitizer drug in cancer cervix is cisplatin. Radiosensitizer drug in cancer cervix is cisplatin. Which of the following uterine anomalies has best reproductive outcome? What is your answer? Bicornuate uterus, septate uterus, arcuate uterus or unicornuate uterus? Which of the following uterine anomalies has got a best reproductive outcome. It is arcuate uterus. It is arcuate uterus. 22 year old female was using OCPs for contraception but now she has been diagnosed with TB. Okay. Doctor wants to start ATT which of the ATT should not be used. Either she has to stop OCPs and switch over to another contraception or if ATT has been used, which drug has a drug interaction with OCPs? 
So the answer is rifampicin. There will be a failure of contraception. Which cancer is highly preventable cancer? Is it cancer breast, endometrium, ovary or cervix? So the answer is cancer cervix is highly preventable cancer. That is why so much emphasis is being given on its vaccination that is Gardasil vaccine and so much is given on the screening. So by screening, by awareness, by vaccination, we can almost eliminate or eradicate cancer cervix. Okay. So screening by a simple test, pap smear, mass screening by VIA or VILI. All of the following are the screening tests for CIN except, which is not a screening method. I want to judge the CIN. For the vaccination, Dr. Himanshu, it's better that if you uh, ask in the PSM, okay, because that is under trial, we use Gardasil or Gardasil 9 in our cancer hospital, okay. So, which is not a screening, colposcopy is a confirmatory test. Colposcopy is a confirmatory test. Rest are the screening tests. Growth on the cervix, what is the investigation? Growth on the cervix, what is the investigation? It is punch biopsy. You can see cervical punch biopsy forceps. You can see cervical punch biopsy forceps. Now, 35-year-old female presents with infertility for last 5 years. Ovulation studies are normal. HSA is normal. Ovulation normal, HSA normal and HSG shows bilateral cyst or bilateral tubal block. What is your next investigation? Always HSG finding needs to be confirmed on laparoscopy because in HSG, if there is a tubal spasm, okay, your finding will be a tubal block. But when you are putting a dye on the laparoscopy, the things will become clear. So laparoscopic chromotubation should be done after an HSG finding. 50 year old female presents with abnormal vaginal bleeding for two months. The management will be. So, after a case of 40 years and above, if there is a vaginal bleeding, always an endometrial sampling or a curettage should be done to rule out the pathology. I have just discussed it. 42-year-old female attends with a histopath report showing endometrial hyperplasia with atypia. Her age is 40, but it is showing an atypical endometrial hyperplasia. So, I am going to go for an hysterectomy. I am not going to give her a progesterone trial. I have already discussed this particular point. A 38-year-old female was diagnosed with unilateral breast cancer. She was put on tamoxifen. Risk of which of the following cancer is increased? What's your answer? Risk of which of the following cancer is increased if the patient is put on tamoxifen? So, hope all of you know there is an increased risk of endometrial cancer. A 35-year-old lady was given ovulation induction beta acid injection and she comes with lower abdominal pain and there is a bilateral theca lutein cyst so whenever there is a beta acid injection given or there is a beta acid beta acid causes stimulation and there is a formation of theca lutein cyst so here treatment is top any medication and observe the patient. So, this cyst will resolve. So, stop all the ovulation induction and put the patient on follow-up. This cyst which has been caused by beta HCG will get resolved. 14-year-old female came with a continuous bleeding. Her age is 14 and she has been continuously bleeding for, bleeding for 20 years days her age is 14 year old she looks very pale because she's been bleeding there is no history of sexual assault there is no history of coitus ever there is no history of tuberculosis in the family there is no history of thyroid disorder so sexual assault any sexual active 
history of thyroid disorder, tuberculosis, all been ruled out because the causes of bleeding in a young female is first there is any case of rape. Number two, there is case of she's been pregnant and she's been aborting. Number three, there can be a thyroid disorder, there can be a coagulation disorder, there can be anemia and there can be tuberculosis. These are the important causes in a young unmarried girl presenting with continuous bleeding. So history you have done, now examination and investigation. What all investigation should be done? Ultrasound, yes, I am going to do an ultrasound. Complete blood count and tuberculosis, yes. Coagulation profile, yes. Thyroid profile, yes. So which investigation I am not going to do is DNC because she is an unmarried girl. Okay. So DNC is not being done. 42-year-old female presents with abnormal uterine bleeding, painful menstruation for 8 months. And there is a uniformly enlarged uterus and tender. So increase enlargement of the uterus. It is tender and there is a 40 plus female with menorrhagia. What is your diagnosis? Uniformly enlarged uterus, tender uterus, 40 year old female and there is menorrhagia and painful menstruation. Menorrhagia and dysmenorrhea. This is clear cut case of adenomyosis. You can see in this, you can see the endometrium, this myometrium is enlarged because there are glands in the myometrium. So this is an MRI image showing the myometrium has become thick because there is so much of endometrial glands and this is a laparoscopy image. So they must have planned the hysterectomy using laparoscopy. So there is a big uterus and it is uniformly enlarged. So there is no irregular enlargement. So it goes against uh, fibroid. It goes against endometriosis. Because in endometriosis, the uterus is normal and there is chocolate cyst of the ovaries. Now, 40-year-old female with intermenstrual bleeding and there is a feeding vessel. This is a polyp and there is a feeding vessel. So it is always an endometrial polyp. This I have been telling and this is a PG question. Ki hamesha agar kuch aisi finding hai aur saath mein feeding vessel hai. Feeding vessel ka matlab. Feeding vessel ka matlab hamesha hi endometrial polyp. Thik hai? So you can see in this case there is a feeding vessel and there is an endometrial polyp in the next slide. Karyotype of complete mole. This is a straight question. 46 sex and abnormal chromosomes are paternal in origin. Okay. Because after fertilization, the chromosome of the sperms duplicates upon itself. First line of treatment. This I have already told you. Bisphosphonates for osteoporosis. Which cannot be detected in the wet film. This we have discussed. Chlamydia. Most common site for vulval cancer is labia majora. Instrument used. What is this instrument? This instrument is a laprocator. And laprocator is used for laparoscopic sterilization. You can see the prongs. This is called as the prongs. So this is for laparoscopic sterilization. You can see this is the fallope rings. Fallope rings. And this is the prongs and this instrument is a laprocator. Laprocator to perform laparoscopic sterilization and this can you see the fallope rings applied. So this is laparoscopic sterilization. Hormones secreted by Sertoli cells are all except. Which hormone is not secreted by Sertoli cells is testosterone. Testosterone is secreted by Leydig cells and rest are secreted by Sertoli cells. So these three hormones are secreted by Sertoli cells. The anti-mullerian hormone, testosterone binding protein and inhibin are secreted by Sertoli cells. Treatment of infertility in hyperprolactinemia is always bromocryptin. Treatment of hyperprolactinemia without infertility is cabergolin. 
A 32 year old female presents with infertility and this is the HSG showing beaded appearance. Beaded appearance of fallopian tube is always genital tuberculosis. Now, let's just go through this particular slide quickly. Okay. So, here I have already discussed the most of the points just to recapitulate this primary amenorrhea mullerian agenesis important thing is uterus is absent and ovary is present so breast development is normal axillary hair pubic hair are normal okay karyotype will be 46 xx androgen insensitivity syndrome uterus is absent and there is undescended testis. In this case, breast is normal. Axillary and pubic hair are absent. Karyotype is 46XY. Turner syndrome is short stature. The breast development is zero. And on ultrasound, there is streak ovary. Streak ovary. So, there is congenital webbing of neck. There is no breast development and karyotype is 45XO. We have already discussed this particular point. So, I am just quickly going through these points. Fine. Now, Asherman syndrome. Remember, there is secondary amenorrhea. This is a rapid and fast revision now. So, detail, concept-based, image-based questions I have discussed. Now, let's go quickly. Asherman syndrome is always a cause of secondary amenorrhea. Important symptom is hypomenorrhea. Hypomenorrhea means scanty periods. Okay. Investigation is HSG and the gold standard investigation is hysteroscopy because you can do the treatment. Haan, YouTube pe rahega, ye remove nahi hoga. So this is Asherman syndrome. This is HSG finding and this is hysteroscopy. Okay. This is a stereoscopy. You can join my telegram link. I am going to share this uh, MCQs list as well as their answer key in my telegram group. Okay. And key point slide is also there which I will share in my telegram group. Now premature ovarian failure. Ovarian failure occurring before the age of 40. Hormonal profile is high FSH high LH and decrease estradiol. It is a cause of secondary amenorrhea and it is a cause of infertility. For secondary amenorrhea, you give treatment estrogen and progesterone. For infertility, you give IVF using donor oocytes. Okay. Premature ovarian failure. Ovarian failure occurring before the age of 40, FSH LH is high, estradiol is down and treatment of secondary amenorrhea is estrogen progesterone and infertility is IVF using donor oocytes. Choice of contraception in newly wed female is OCP. Choice of contraception in female with menstrual disturbance, OCP. Choice of contraception in unmarried girl, I would say barrier will protect her from STD and OCP will protect her from pregnancy. Choice of contraception in promiscuity, multiple sexual partners, PID, STD prevention is always a barrier contraceptive. Choice of contraception in trophoblastic tumor follow-up cases is OCPs. Choice of contraception to prevent ovarian cancer is OCPs. Choice of contraception to prevent cancer cervix is Condoms which are because it is caused by HPV virus which is sexually transmitted virus. Now laparoscopic sterilization. This is laparocator. This is felloprings. This is carbon dioxide insufflator. Carbon dioxide insufflator. This is clips applied on the fallopian tubes using laparoscopy. Now this is chaya. This is centchromon. And this is Antra DMPA injection. This is in National Family Planning Program. 
infertility male infertility who cut off limit for the semen analysis volume is 1.5 count is 15 million morphology 4% and mortality 32% which is most important fertility indicator in the semen analysis fertility indicator is morphology of the sperms should be absolutely normal morphology of the sperm should be absolutely normal hormone produced by sertoli cells are anti mullerian hormone testosterone binding protein and inhibin hormone produced by ladic cells is testosterone please do keep revising uterine factor of infertility we can see the submucosal polyp fibroid asherman septate and unhealthy uterus this is follicular studies and this you can see this is the dominant follicle on ultrasound dominant follicle on ultrasound test for ovulation basal body temperature cervical mucus method premenstrual endometrial um, biopsy ultrasound and serum progesterone on day 21 ovulation induction it is latrozole which is a drug of choice and then clomiphene citrate for hyperprolactinemia it is the bromocryptin which is the drug of choice now test for diminished ovarian reserve it is anti mullerian hormone treatment of infertility in diminished ovarian reserve is ivf using the donor oocytes now this is normal hsg showing free spill of dye this is laparoscopic sterilization and the dye used in laparoscopic sterilization is methylene blue dye. Now this is bilateral distal tubal block or bilateral hydrosalping. This is bilateral proximal tubal block. This is peritoneal factor of infertility and the gold standard investigation for peritoneal factor of infertility is laparoscopy. And by peritoneal factor of infertility, we mean to rule out the endometriosis. Maximum chance of ectopic pregnancy is previous ectopic pregnancy or PID. Triad of ectopic pregnancy is amenorrhea, pain and bleeding. Earliest to rupture ectopic pregnancy is isthmic rupture. Late to rupture is interstitial. This is a final revision for your exam. And ampullary rupture is seen around 8 to 10 weeks of pregnancy. Investigation for ectopic pregnancy, transvaginal scan, beta, HCG and Doppler. And you can see this ring of fire sign in the adenexa. Rupture ectopic pregnancy, the management is immediate laparotomy. And you have to do the resuscitation, resuscitation simultaneously. For unruptured ectopic pregnancy, the drug is methotrexate and this is the criteria for giving methotrexate. This is laparoscopically showing the image showing ectopic pregnancy. This is HSG showing septate uterus and this is bicornate uterus. You can see the angle is different so you can differentiate. This is a septate uterus on HSG on laparoscopy. And the gold standard is hysteroscopy because you can resect out the septum. This is bicornuate uterus on laparoscopy and simultaneously laparoscopy is the treatment where you do the Strassmann's metroplasty. This is misplaced IUCD, copper T and this is abnormal uterine bleeding, palm cohen classification. Okay. This is tumor markers for epithelial ovarian tumor CA125, dysgerminoma, LDH and alkaline phosphatase, yolk sac tumor, it is alpha fetoprotein and antitrypsin, granulosa cell tumor is inhibit. This is myoma screw, this is myomectomy being performed, this is bony's myomectomy clamp, this is LAVH, laparoscopic assisted vaginal hysterectomy, this is red degeneration of the fibroid and you have to do a conservative treatment for red degeneration of the fibroid this is pap smear and this is Ayers spatula for conventional pap and this is a brush to perform paps this is how the pap smear is been taken 
uh, pap smear is to be started from 21 years of age and every three yearly you should repeat it this is liquid paps liquid based cytology this is cryosurgery freezing of the tissues this is done for dysplasia this is leap where you burn the cervix leap is loop electrosurgical excision procedure this is radiotherapy for the cancer cervix this is alice tissue forceps to hold the tough structures like rectus sheath this is ovum artery forceps to perform dilatation and evacuation like in case of inevitable or incomplete abortion this is uterine sound this is cocker's artery forceps it can be used for arm it can be used as clamps while doing the gynae surgeries this is carmen's cannula disposable this is divorce retracted to retract the abdominal organs while you're doing the surgery this is viris needle uh, while you're creating doing a laparoscopy you put in a viris needle and then you put in a trocar and cannula and then laparoscope this is trocar and cannula this is colposcope there are certain key points and this key points i am going to share in my telegram group this is very important let's just quickly go through some of it not all of it most common cause of primary amenorrhea is turner syndrome and second most common cause of primary amenorrhea is mullerian agenesis first visible sign of puberty in girls is thilarchy sequence of puberty in girls is thilarchy puberty menarche hormone responsible for puberty changes in the girls is the estrogen most common cause of hirsutism in young girl is polycystic ovarian disease treatment of infertility in pcod is latrozole best investigation for ovulation is transvaginal scan gold standard treatment for asherman syndrome is hysteroscopy pearl index is used to calculate accidental pregnancies obvious growth on cervix it is the punch biopsy treatment of atypical endometrial hyperplasia is hysterectomy now hope you have enjoyed this session and hope this session is going to be useful definitely the questions will come definitely the questions will come from from this discussion so to do revise the questions which i have discussed do revise the image based question apply your concept and rule out the options and you come to arrive at a two answers the most appropriate answer you mark single liners also you revise long questions you practice image based questions instruments used in gynae all this is important so hope this sessions are useful to you uh, students uh, you can join uh, my telegram group and i am going to post all this content in my telegram group okay so the telegram uh, i have already been uh, sharing in the telegram okay so you can ask from nlc if you have been in the nlc group so you can take the link of my telegram i will share my telegram link in the nlc group as well and uh, i am going to post all these pdfs okay in my telegram group okay so hope you enjoyed the session i am seeing your messages continuously it's been flowing and uh, thank you very much that you have uh, you know like uh, enjoyed the session so i know you have enjoyed the session so thank you very much for your presence and uh, it makes the teacher very very satisfied and happy so 
hope you will do the best and you will you know like uh, complete all the uh, all the questions okay so i am just ending up this session with the hope and uh, see you tomorrow guys and in the same manner we will we will revise the uh, obstetric part as well so permit me to end up this session now okay uh, i will ask dr shibu to share my telegram link in this group so you can contact dr shibu for that okay okay so you can ask the coordinators mr bheem or dr shibu and uh, they will share the link okay so bye bye and good night hmm